Speaking of busy work and more AI magic, our next session is how to make AI feel not so terrifying and not so sci-fi-y. So Seth, I'm sure you have a lot of thoughts. And it, we had a great conversation earlier, an actual serious conversation about the ethics of AI. There are very few and far between, so I think we should highlight it. This is true. It. We should quickly talk about it before mm -hmm. the moment passes. So mm -hmm. tell us about the ethics of AI and what is the first question everyone should ask before they go and start building AI things. Great question. My first approach to this is always understand what it actually is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what AI is in a sentence, so it's not so sci-fi, and then Chloe's going to show you how it's totally that. Mm -hmm. Basically, AI as it is now is a lazy way of writing functions with data. Yep. That's it. And once you, once you recognize that, then you need to start from an ethical perspective and ask, this lazy function that I'm writing with data, mm -hmm. who will it impact and how? And that's before you even start collecting data. Start Once you have that question at the forefront, then you're able to make some good ethical decisions. For example, if you're building an AI that tells you whether someone may or may not default on a loan so that you can maybe let them have a loan, you should think about who is that impacting mm -hmm. and how. And once you do that, then you'll be able to look at your data and be like, hmm, looks like we've only been lending to a certain class or type mm -hmm. of people. So our AI algorithm is not going to be very good at even getting new and different customers. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, that, and, that, and that's not even getting into other issues of, of ethics like racism and other issues. Right. Just like you might be building a product that is self-selecting for the current customer you have so you won't grow. And that's, that's a huge problem when it comes to AI and ethics. You just you know you're building a function. Mm -hmm. Who is it impacting? How? And then you can go from there. We're going to continue this conversation after Chloe's session because I also have a ton of input into who, who is writing AI. All right, Chloe, Seth and I will shut up. Over to you. Can't wait to see what you got. All right. Hello, 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 everyone. I'm so, so excited. And just to um, pile off of what Seth and uh, Donna were just saying, I completely agree. I think that this is a really interesting opportunity to be able to use AI not only to kind of make those mundane tasks become a little bit more automated, but it's also an opportunity for so many of our citizen developers out there to get their feet wet with AI and realize the capabilities of it and then you know, beyond Power Apps, maybe create your own ethical AI situations and formats yourself. So could not agree more. Excited. We'll be tuning in for the conversation afterwards, y'all. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Chloe Condon. I am a cloud advocate here at Microsoft, and I will go ahead and show my slides now. Um, but I am going to be talking all about how to make AI feel less like sci-fi. Um, so this talk, it, obviously, um, most of us here joining for Powerful Devs, we're citizen developers. And uh, this is going to be a talk about how we can use AI, even though maybe it might be a bit of a, a scary topic for, for some of us. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So a little bit about me and who I am and what I do. Again, my name is Chloe Condon. My Twitter handle is just my name there in the corner if you want to tweet any questions to me that I can answer afterwards. And I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. I work on the academic team here. So a lot of my job is to educate um, students and enable them to use Azure. Um, I'm also an actress turned developer, which usually is a fun fact that I share. Oops. I'm getting a little bit of feedback on my sound here, so I'm going to pause for a sec. Here. All right, there we go. I was getting a little bit of feedback, but I think we are back to normal. All right, so a little bit about myself. Um, I'm an actress turned developer, which usually is kind of a fun fact that I share, uh, but it's actually really, really relevant to this particular talk because my previous day job was working in a lot of citizen developer type roles. So I worked in the fields of recruiting, office management. I worked as an executive assistant for a little bit. I worked in retail. Uh, I was a customer support agent for a, a brief moment in my life. So um, this talk really, oops, let's see. Let me share my screen here. Sorry, y'all. A little bit of technical difficulty. There we go. That should be much better. It's getting a little bit of feedback, but I think we're good. All right. Back to the slides. I think we're good now. <laughs> 
screen is shared. All right, so here's the first slide if you missed it here, uh, how to make AI feel less like sci-fi. And we'll go right back here. All righty. So um, as I was mentioning, I previously worked in the field of recruiting, office management, executive assistant work, retail, customer support. So this talk I really wrote with my previous self in mind. Um, I really want you to think of this uh, talk as if Chloe could go in a time machine and give herself power apps to automate these really mundane tasks, as Seth mentioned before. So before we kind of get started into the uh, meat and potatoes of all of this, let's review what artificial intelligence is and maybe what it means to us. So what comes to mind when you think of artificial intelligence. Now, personally, for me, um, I started learning how to code five or six years ago, um, and I attended a boot camp where I learned most of my Python and JavaScript knowledge, but I pictured this movie, which is called Artificial Intelligence. Um, it is a uh, movie starring Jude Law and Haley Joel Osment, um, and if you're unfamiliar, the plot is about a robotic boy who's the first boy to be programmed to love, um, who's adopted as a test case as a Cybertronics employee. So I hear that description and I think, wow, that is way beyond my skill set, especially as a citizen developer. Um, but it's one of the first sci-fi movies I've ever seen, and it truly defined as a non-technical individual at the time when I was 10 or 11 years old, what AI was. Um, it's a fascinating, the film itself is a fascinating commentary on robotic sentience and machine learning. It's a heartbreaking film, so get your tissues out for sure. But the reason I bring up this film isn't because I am a uh, Stanley Kubrick fan. It's because I actually um, wanted to share, oops, let me make sure I've got my screen shared up here. Um, the reason I wanted to share this fun fact with you is not because I'm a Stanley Kubrick fan. It's actually because I wanted to illustrate that um, all I knew about AI before I, I, any of this was this film. And it's beyond my skill set and not anywhere near my skill set at the time, although I am getting a little bit closer. Um, and when you kind of think of these uh, basic, like when you think of the term AI, and you do a, a quick image search for it, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a lot of images of what is AI, machine learning, a lot of images representing some matrix looking style code overlaid as a brain or a face or body or hands. A little intimidating, right? Um, usually this is symbolizing data information um, and obviously we're training data to become human-like so it can learn. And it, the visual representation has become very person-like, which I think can be a little bit of an entry to barrier when we think, oh, AI and machine learning, way, way beyond what I can do as a non-technical person. Um, but machine intelligence actually helps us make decisions, learn, predict outcomes, recognize speech, recognize language. There's so, so many things that we can automate. Now, I know we have a lot of citizen developers on this call, and I'm going to assume that most of the folks here today are newer to AI or maybe even feel a little afraid of it, like, I don't know, robots? I don't know, Chloe. <laughs> um, but here I'm going to kind of show you the scope of what can be accomplished by someone not familiar with code or the concepts of machine learning. So. Here we go, and that's okay. If you're totally unfamiliar with AI, I've been there and I'm here to say it's not as sci-fi-like as you may perceive. In fact, there's ways to use artificial intelligence and machine learning in very small but easy, impactful ways that allow your business to not only become more efficient, um, but also to automate, predict, and gain value from the data that you have. Um, let's see, sorry y'all, we're having a little bit of screen share issues, so I am going to share my screen again. All right, and here we go. All right, so artificial intelligence can be for everyone. Um, so as I mentioned before, I previously worked in a bunch of non-technical roles. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with AI Builder, um, it's a no-code interface that allows folks to enhance their apps and business processes with AI, and it allows easy ways to build and configure things within Power Apps. So of course, this is a conference all about Power Platform, so I don't need to go too much into why creating tools and APIs and features that are easily implemented with no code is important. However, I really want to iterate, reiterate 
just how exciting it is to me that these tools are not only available to everyone, including citizen developers um, and developers looking to save time, but it gives folks the power to create tools and enable business processes that previously were unavailable to the average citizen. Um, so people can actually leverage the Power Platform and build applications faster with far less effort. Um, that way we can focus our time and energy on more important things. Um, but I really want to just iterate how, how exciting this is. Alrighty, so next image here is kind of fun. Um, this one is uh, a little fun sneak peek into my previous life here. I'm going to share my screen one more time to make sure we have this fun image that I can share with you. There we go. And playing from the side. Alrighty. So here is a picture of me in college. I worked at a toy store. <laughs> and lucky for you all, I kept every photo from college. So that yes, that is me dressed up as Buzz Lightyear in a costume. Don't worry, there is a reason for this photo. So at college, I worked in um, several different uh, jobs, including retail. I worked as a customer support agent for a little bit of time. Um, I worked as a recruiter, an office manager, all sorts of fun different jobs. And let's see, let me share this slide up here. Ba -ba -ba. There we go. So um, here's a picture, as I was mentioning, of me as Buzz Lightyear. And I want you to think of a different time where Chloe had very different colored hair in a different, different world, um, where a lot of my job was uh, working in retail during the day. And if you've ever worked in retail before, you've probably heard of inventory management. Um, this is an essential part of business management. And as an employee working in retail, inventory night is often meant, uh, often means to folks that they have to stay overnight in the store from midday through midnight, returning home at two or three in the morning. And you know, for a boutique store that maybe sells 400 to 100 SKUs, this isn't too bad, but consider situations like this. I used to work at a toy store, and one such night, myself and a coworker were tasked with counting and checking how many magic towels we had in stock. So if you've never seen a magic towel before, uh, the image that I've shared on this slide here is a non-branded magic towel. Usually they have a children's image on it or cartoon of some kind. And we had to go through hundreds and hundreds of different magic towels and determine how many we had left. We had to um, write down what the SKUs were, um, what the different designs were, if they were missing the barcode so we could go back to them later. And we sat in the back room for hours taking turns, reading the SKUs to each other, counting the items, double checking the items. Now as humans, um, this is an incredibly long task, um, working overnight on little sleep. Not only is it time consuming, but there's a lot of room for error. Um, and it allows, uh, and, and, but imagine, imagine if you will, if there was a way to make this easier. So instead of two individuals being trained to pick out the towel, identify each towel, um, share each towel into a, maybe write them down physically, put them in a document, however that looks like for them. Imagine if there was a way that we could automate this. Okay, you're probably seeing where this is going, right? So um, believe it or not, this is absolutely possible to automate with the power of AI Builder. So with object detection, we can actually identify and count objects within any image. This way we can automate business processes based on real-time data, data that we've inputted from a separate source. We can identify low supplies. We can flag unexpected items so much more automatically. And we don't have to be counting each towel. That's the most important part, right? So with the ability to create apps that include object detection, it's incredibly simple and easy to create and design an application that can count and track these items with the power of object detection in AI Builder. So it's really, really simple, as simple as selecting your domain, choosing the objects you'd like to detect, add the images, tag the images, and train them. So I'll walk that through that um, for everyone now. But for the sake of this example, let's say that we're doing one with magic towels. So in this um, particular image that I'm sharing with you, it's an image of the uh, what looks to be a Microsoft store, because I'm seeing some Surface items here, and it's individually categorized each one of these objects on a retail shelf. So you can see this is just a screenshot from using AI Builder. There's a bunch of different ways that we can uh, decide or determine how we want to sort these items. Maybe it's common objects, uh, objects on retail shelves, maybe it's brand logos. So if we're able to identify an object from a brand logo, we can do it that way. Um, so I'm going to go to step one here. 
So step one that we need to do to use AI Builder is teach the model about our objects. So we need to select or define the object names and upload 15 images of each of these things. So you're probably thinking, okay, why do I need to upload 15 images? Great question, y'all. So in order to be able to train a model to accurately be able to identify um, what it is we're going to be categorizing, we actually need to train it on a minimum um, of 15 items to make sure, yes, this is, uh, this is the item that we're looking for, and this is how we categorize it. So um, I'm going to choose what objects I want to be detected. In this case, I'm going to choose to detect different colored towels. But of course, this can also be defined by a SKU, an inventory name. Um, for the sake of this demo, I'm just making them towels. So I have a miscellaneous towel here. I have a blue towel, a green towel, an orange towel. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how the code version of this would work or how machine learning or AI might models work, this is basically a UI that's allowing us to kind of extract the main parts of what it would look like to code our own AI or ML solution here. So we're saying, hey, these are the four different tiles that I want to be, be able to identify from an image. Um, next step of object detection is going to be to add our images and to tag them. So this step is fun. Um, as I said, you'll need 15 images of each item, and these are things you can either upload um, from SharePoint, blob storage, maybe on your computer, and then we're going to tag them to train our model. So here's an example of that here. Um, these are some magic towels that I randomly found, um, and I'm able to identify them. So it's just like tagging maybe an image. Um, I'm tagging, hey, this is the green one here. This is what the miscellaneous one, miscellaneous one looks like, and here's what an orange one would look like. Um, so once we've trained our model and we've found at least, um, oh, I should also mention it's not 15 images. You actually need 15 15 images of each item. So I'll need 15 of the miscellaneous, 15 of the green, 15 of the orange. Um, next step here is going to be to publish our uh, publish our models. That way we can actually learn from this data. And I'm going to share my screen one more time here. Here we go. Um, and once we have that model, we can actually use it going forward. And that way, uh, we don't have to go piece by piece, item by item, write them down, transfer them onto into a, a virtual data set. It's all right there for us. So in this particular example here, I have um, different examples of T. So imagine not only the time that I'm able to, to spend on other more important tasks, so I'm not sitting in a back room counting all these magic towels. Um, but also, this gives, uh, especially in today's economy where we're unable to be close to people, a job that maybe would have taken two, three, maybe five people can now be done by one person by taking a photo. So I'm all about making people's lives easier, and this is just a great example of that. Alrighty, so my next one here that I'm going to talk about is form processing. Now, I know we have a bunch of citizen developers in the chat here. We probably have to process a lot of forms. I know a lot of my job as an executive assistant, as an office manager, doing a lot of my day-to-day -day tasks included, inputting forms, inputting business cards, all sorts of fun things like that. So, form processing, um, I'm particularly excited about this one, allows us the capabilities to automatically process documents. So you can save time on doing routine tasks, um, extract downloaded files, put them to, into AI Builder, and then you'll be able to train and test them. All righty. So um, here's, a here's just an example of the image screen. So these are just some test documents that have been added in here. So the first step would be to upload at least five different versions of the same basic document. Now, typically, if um, we have some sort of input form for an employee, maybe you work in HR, or perhaps you have resumes that you need to upload. I know I was a recruiter in my previous life, <laughs> so I can understand uh, how that could be a, a task that maybe would think, gosh, I wish there was some sort of robot or some sort of way to automate this for me. That is where machine learning is going to become very, very useful. So let me share my slide right here. All righty. So form processing, very, very similar. You'll probably notice that this is a similar situation to what things look like with identifying objects in our images. So here we have a form, um, and we have a couple different sections here, the from section, the bill to section. Um, we have the subtotal, the tax, the shipping, the total, and of course, the balance due. And 
using the power of AI Builder, we're actually able to, instead of having to go through form by form, identify you know, how much balance is due on each of these things, AI Builder is doing that for us. Um, I'm super, super excited about this one in particular because Fun fact about me, another throwback photo of Chloe, I actually used to work as a virtual personal assistant and a lot of my job included data entry. Um, so with the power of being able to automatically process these documents um, with these applications, you can enjoy that extra free time and spend it doing more important things. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, as Seth mentioned before. Um, these are tasks that you can automate using the power of AI and using the power of machine learning. Now, um, you're probably asking yourself, wow, there's so many things that I can be you know, changing and updating and kind of making my life simpler with, and you would be right. Um, so this slide here um, is just a couple other examples that we have within AI Builder. So ask yourself, what can, what can AI help me achieve? So there's a couple examples here. Again, if you wanna use AI Builder, you can get a free trial. I'll um, add some links to the end here of uh, how you can get started in our learn modules to get up and running and get your free trial started but oops, let me share my screen again. Sorry, y'all. I am just running into all the fun technical difficulties today. Here we go, screen two. All righty. Um, so here's a couple examples here. We have business card reader. I can't tell you how many times as an office manager or an executive assistant, I was given a pile of business cards to enter into uh, a database or a system. Um, entity extraction sentiment analysis. This one's particularly exciting to me as someone who used to work as a customer support agent um, because we would use a lot of different tactics and ways to try to determine if what we were providing, the service we were providing was having a positive or negative outcome. So sentiment analysis is really great. Text recognition, language detection. Um, another really useful one for customer support to make sure that the right teams are answering the right topics, uh, topics that have the correct language skills to do so. Um, so think about any sort of moment where you're thinking, gee, this is taking a long time. I, you know, Maybe you're copying and pasting a lot. Maybe there's situations in which you're just finding that you're doing a lot of things that are slowing down your time. I'm gonna, uh, I'd be willing to bet that AI Builder would be able to help you. So, it's time to learn, let's learn. Um, so here are a couple links here. Um, I have uh, aka.ms slash AI not sci-fi. If you wanna just get started, maybe you're completely new to AI builder, maybe you're completely learn, or sorry, completely new to learning any of these kind of topics. This is a really great way to walk through step-by-step -step how to do that. Um, aka.ms slash form fun. I know we're gonna have some folks in here who are particularly excited for the filling out the form portion of this. Um, and I will be chatting over on Dev2, um, doing an AMA, answering any of your questions on this. So if you have specific use cases maybe, or maybe um, you're thinking, huh, maybe is this is this something that I could use to automate this process? Or uh, maybe you're thinking, well, you know, I don't know if, if it would be able to determine different animals in an image or different, uh, maybe I work for a very specific type of data that I need to be sharing. I'm happy to answer those questions for you. I'm gonna share this slide for you one more time so we can get it up here. Here we go. And, uh, but yeah, I'm super, super excited um, to see what y'all build with AI Builder. Please, please, please tag me on Twitter. Find me, let me know what you're building. Let me know how this has made your life more easy because gee, I, uh, I cannot reiterate enough how much, I guess I need to work on my time machine skills in addition to my AI builder skills. <laughs> so I can go back and tell Chloe uh, back in the day that she should be not spending time putting on a podcast and copying and paste info into a spreadsheet. Um, so again, my name is Chloe Condon. Here are these lovely links uh, that you can come and learn more on Microsoft Learn. And that is about enough from me. And I will send it on over to our lovely hosts, who I'm sure have amazing, amazing, especially Seth, has amazing, wonderful mm -hmm. things to contribute to this conversation. So thanks, y'all, for joining. And I will see you on Dev2.